to the Clinton Foundation? You shocked the George Stephanopoulos, looks like a male escort. He's been a male escort of the uh, Democrat Party from the day he started. He never was a journalist, never. He's always been a pretty boy uh, escort for the Democrat Party. We have now in America what I've said for 10 years. We have reporters who suddenly call themselves journalists who are nothing more than fifth columnists disguised as members of the fourth estate. We have no fourth estate. I am the fourth estate. Drudge is the fourth estate. About 10 websites of the fourth estate. That's it. There is no fourth estate. Do you know what the fourth estate is? Okay, it's the fourth estate. We're supposed to stick our fingers into the side of the liars in government. We're supposed to be those who keep them in line. We're supposed to be the burr in the saddle of ABC, CBS, NBC, and NYT. But when we become the same as them and we're not the burr in the saddle, what are we? Prostitutes. And so, therefore, I say to you, going back, circling back to my first story, on the headline, we were told that the great Delta Force... Uh, killed a key ISIS figure, Abu Sayyaf, and then they captured his wife and great intelligence, and all the Delta forces came home without a scratch on their shiny badges. Well, I hope it's true, but we haven't seen one picture yet. Now, if it is true and we haven't seen one picture yet, the only re reason is is because Harvey Weinstein is still in Kant. He's probably on a yacht enjoying an after party from the film festival, and he hasn't gotten back to make the movie yet to show it uh, to show us Capricorn 2, uh, produced by Obama Inc., the new worldwide uh, dictatorship that's emerging. You got the race hater in the White House every day now giving a speech, turning black against white, white against black, black against Asian, Asian against black, every day in every way, the same rotten, stinking people running the world. I'll be right back. Savage. Here we have ISIS taking over one major city after another. And this clown is talking about climate change posing a threat uh, to national security. Only in America could it get away with it because we no longer have a fourth estate. We have a fifth column with a single party of left-wing demagogues running everything from top to bottom. Our number one I spent explaining to you in some detail what went on in Germany in the 1930s on the birth of the Gestapo under Adolf Hitler, how it was done state, step by step, st step by step, stage by stage. And I compared it to what he's doing to our police in this country, uh, step by step, day by day, city by city. I'm not going to repeat myself. I suppose it'll be webcast, however they do this, podcast on various and sundry websites. I suggest you listen to it and share it with people. You're very lucky that you have me on the radio. I rarely blow my own horn. People think I'm very egotistical, and I do too much of it, but you actually don't know I don't do much of it at all. The thing is, is that were it not for the quirks of the socialist government that you're living in, you wouldn't even be hearing me. I would have been a college professor of ethnobotany and never heard from, except in scholarly circles. But because they cauterized me through the fascism of liberalism and drove me away from the universities... I come before you fully developed and fully educated in so many areas. And as a result, I see the truth and I don't wait. Now, it has been written that God sees the truth but waits. Thomas Mann wrote that in one of his novel, short stories. I was very impressed with it. And it was about the nihilism of Germany after World War I, before uh, the Nazis arose during the liberal Weimar Republic. The country was out of control. Liberalism had destroyed the social order. Young gangs were roving the streets of Germany doing what they're doing today in America. And it was fascism that came along because the people were demanding law and order. And now we have the grand illusionist that we're dealing with. And I, you know what's hard for me to believe is that every day he gets worse. It's not as though, see, this is a pathology here we're dealing with. We're actually dealing with a very ill man. He is so demonically ill that he doesn't even realize what... Does he realize what he's doing, I ask myself every day? How can a man get up every day and while looking at himself in the... You get up, wash your face, go to the bathroom, you look at yourself in the mirror, you comb your hair, brush your teeth, whatever. Does he say to himself, what can I do to destroy white America today? How can I destroy the power structure every day? How can I weaken this country even further? Is that what he's doing? Because there's no other explanation for his activities. It's as though a man wakes up every day and says, how can I weaken the European-American dominance of this country? 
How can I make this country less racist, which is a code word for weakening white America? I'm sorry, you want a conversation on race? Didn't Eric Holder say we're cowards? Didn't Eric Holder say that we're too cowardly to have a discussion on race? Well, let's have a discussion on race. He wants us to talk about it. I am talking about it. I am so sick and tired of hearing how evil white men are. I am so sick and tired of hearing how oppressed the black people are. I am so sick and tired of hearing how great every Hispanic is that I want to have a conversation on race. So that's what we're doing. We're having a conversation on race. Since Eric Holder said that we're all cowards on it. White men are evil. Hispanics are all Einsteins. And black men are all oppressed. That's the, that's the narrative every day. And your poor daughter goes to college. This poor child you gave birth to has to go and listen to these communist cockamamie lunatics who tell her she has white privilege. She could have multiple sclerosis and come from a poor home. They'll tell her if she's European American, she has white, white privilege. That's what your daughter has to put up with this massive Soviet style propaganda under this grand illusionist. I want to shift though to something entirely different. We have no authority figures to believe in. We have no government to believe in. That's why I wrote government zero and it's not an infomercial. Government zero, no borders, no language, no culture. The book is on Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, and I made a commitment which I should repeat right now. All of the royalties that I make on that book, and I'll repeat it again, write it down, any and all royalties I make on that book will be given to my Savage Scholarship Fund for deserving college students going forward. That will be one of the things I leave as my legacy after my radio career. Savage. I'm aware I may not be the youngest candidate in this race, but I have one big advantage. I've been coloring my hair for years. Yeehaw! You're not going to see me turn white in the White House. So she is overtly either clinically psychotic, and the reason I say that is that she's trying to sound like she's from the South when she isn't a spoiled northerner with the best of advantages like Obama, who again tries to get down with the uh, the gutter people, let's say in Ferguson, to make believe he's one of them. It's typical of, of lying politicians, but this one I say is psychotic because she used this voice before and had been ridiculed for it for years, and here she is falling apart in the polls because everyone knows what a thief and a liar she is, at least they think she is, that's the common perception is that she's a thief and a liar. With a Clinton uh, library slush fund, I mean, if you did what they did, you'd be in prison. The IRS would hit you harder uh, than any heavyweight boxer has ever hit an opponent for what they are doing and getting away with because they own the government. There's a government of the powerful, by the powerful, and for the powerful. Make no mistake about it. But nevertheless, put that aside. She goes to the Main Street Bakery in the South. And she uses a fake accent that any Southerner would laugh at. So Todd Starnes writes, I was surprised Miss Hillary didn't show up at her campaign rally in bare feet, waving a cast iron skillet and singing Dixie. <laughs> it's very funny stuff. My point is she's using propaganda or attempting to use propaganda to sell herself. Next she'll appear at an old age home in Boca Raton where there are still old Jews left, who may be over 80 who still speak with a rising... Uh, in inflection at the end of their sentences, and she'll make believe she's from Brooklyn. You think I don't like a knesh? You think I'm not for Israel? Obama does the same thing. The only people who don't do it are the square conservatives. Either they can't do it, they don't have the art to do it, they're too embarrassed to do it, but as a result, people think that they're squares. They can be wonderful people. And I'm trying to say to you that only by maligning the enemy and the, and the opposite of what I'm saying, or to complete what I'm saying on the other side of the moon, maligning the enemy will defeat the enemy. So in this case, I'm maligning Hillary Clinton for being a phony. But she's not our biggest problem. Our biggest problem is ISIS. And I'm going back to World War II when a powerful propaganda machine helped the United States win the war in the Pacific. Frank Capra. Great film director. He had Mr. Smith goes to Washington in 1939. What did he do just weeks after Pearl Harbor? Frank Capra, the famous director, quit Hollywood and volunteered for service in the United States Army. 
With his nation at war, he was willing to do his bit in taking the fight to the Axis powers. Where's Harvey Weinstein when we need him? He's a Jew, after all. I know you just winced and sucked air into your, into your filling. Harvey Weinstein's Jewish. ISIS would like to cut Harvey Weinstein's head off and throw him down a well. Katzenberg is Jewish. Geffen is Jewish. They are the Caesars of Hollywood. And the best protection I have against those who will accuse me of anti-Semitism is the fact that it's true what I just said. They own Hollywood. They run Hollywood. And yet not none of them, as I can tell, has ever produced a movie, which shows us the danger we are in from the Arabs in ISIS, who hate Jews in particular, and Christians in general, and Muslims who don't conform to their fourth century, ninth century view of the world. Where is the Frank Capra of our time? So Frank, Frank Capra leaves the military, volunteers for service in the U.S. Army. He didn't go to the front lines to throw grenades at Nazis or stick bayonets into the guts of Japanese soldiers. He spent the entire war shooting his target with film. And he fashioned moving images into very powerful messages. And what his weapon was was not a Thompson submachine gun, but a bulky movie camera. And over the war years, Frank Capra and his team produced seven documentary-style movies, the famous, the very famous Why We Fight series, to explain why the U.S. found itself involved in the greatest war of all time. We are involved in the second greatest war of our time. And we are neutralized. We are neutered. We have been defeated by the lesbians. I'll say it like it is. It's like I don't care anymore. It's like I've come out of an illness. All gloves are off. I can't even mask what I'm saying. The radical lesbians destroyed America. They neutralized the Christian male. They made him ashamed of his own heritage and his own race. They have made us incapable of defending ourselves, let alone defeating the enemy. That's a full sentence. It started with the vile, the vile mouth of Bella Abzug. And here we are today where people are afraid to say the truth about ISIS, who both enslave young girls, rape young girls, kidnap women, turn them into slaves. Everybody knows this. When have you last seen a movie showing the enemy for what they are? When have you seen a Harvey Weinstein flick starring, let us say, Sean Penn as a valiant officer who goes to the Middle East and sees the rapes, the murders, and the kidnapping? Never. And you'll never see it. Because we don't have a Frank Capra. We have the opposite right now. We have propagandists in Hollywood who, instead of using their genius and never underestimate their genius, instead of using their genius to help us form a war against the enemy, shape the minds of our young and our soldiers to get ready for the fight that we're fighting right now, instead of doing this, the Weinsteins and the Geffens and the Katzenbergs and the Spielbergs of our time use all their efforts to debase the white Christian heterosexual male in subtle ways, of course. They don't do it as overtly as they did five or six years ago, but it's there in my estimation. I can show you five different movies where the enemy is the white heterosexual Christian male. And by the way, in that, that, that legion of Hollywood titans I mentioned, I would say the least offensive is Spielberg. At least he has to his credit the great movie Saving Private Ryan, which was ultimately an anti-war movie, by the way. Make no mistake about it. It wasn't the Why We Fight movie. Brilliant, wonderful, excellent. But it wasn't Why We Fight. It was more like Why Should We Fight, if you actually studied it as I have. That's my job, is to look beyond the beyond. And so, as again, I want to say maligning the enemy is something we don't do. We've been neutralized by very, very powerful forces in this country. And so you never see a movie showing an Arab as the enemy. Never. That, that's even though Jordan tells their own people how dangerous ISIS is, and they're a Muslim country, we are so, I don't know what word to use. I don't know what word to use. I can't. It's a family show. We've been so deballed that the people in this country don't even know what's going on over there. Then there were artists and writers who took it upon themselves to poke, provoke, prod, and otherwise persuade the average civilian at home how evil the Germans and Japanese were in World War II. And these propagandists produce messages in newsreels, billboards, print ads, on the radio, everywhere you turned, 
imaginable and otherwise there was a propaganda film or a propaganda poster during the years of World War II. Where is the propaganda?